Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Dom Mecca. Today we're doing an exciting video. Ever wondered what alien civilizations might end up looking like if we ever discover them? We could take some guesses. Luckily, Corcus Arts went and did the homework and put together an amazing animated video. I haven't seen it yet, but you know their track record. So today's video is called What Do Alien Civilizations Look Like? The Kardashev Scale. Can't pronounce that name. Maybe you could help me out in the comments. So if you're into these type of videos, checking out reactions or commentary on them, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because I got more of these coming. Thank you for watching. Let's get right into the video. The observable universe is a big place that's been around for more than 13 billion years. I Jeez. You know, sounds like a lot of time, but then it's... Is it really 13 billion? If we compare it to, you know, how long black holes might exist, how long different type of stars might exist in their lifetime, we're right at the beginning of the universe, it would seem like very early on, on cosmic scales, you know, not human scale. <laughs> up to two trillion galaxies made up of something like 20. Two tri okay, the observable. This is just the area that light reaches us. Like this is just the area that we could see. But, you know, this could go on forever. But they said two trillion galaxies. 30,000 billion billion stars surround our home galaxy. Jeez. In the Milky Way alone, scientists assume there are some 40 billion Earth-like planets. 40 billion Earth-like planets in just our freaking galaxy. Oh. In the habitable zone of their stars. Oh, and not just, just randomly placed, but literally in the habitable zone, meaning they potentially could be new homes for us. When we look at these numbers, it's hard. And not just new homes for us, maybe there's life there already. Not to imagine that there is nobody else out there. It yeah, to me, to me, it seems next to impossible that there's nothing else out there. Impossible. Impossible. Would change our perception of ourselves forever if we found others. Just knowing that this vast place is not dead would shift our perspective outwards and could help us get over our irrelevant quarrels. But before true, looking true. for our the wars and the border scrimmages and the ideological warfare and all this nonsense that doesn't even really matter and we're killing each other over it, it's crazy. Our new best friends or worst enemies, we have a problem to solve. What are we actually looking for? Why force anyone to be a certain way as long as they're not hurting anybody, you know, as long as they're not doing damage to other people? Arts. In a universe that big and old, we have to assume that civilizations start millions of years apart from each other and develop in different directions and speeds. Mm. So not only are we player three joined <laughs> looking over distances of dozens to hundreds of thousands of light years, player when two left meaning uh, they got wiped out. Ooh. Looking for a civilization ranging from cavemen to super advanced. So imagine alien cavemen <laughs> that would be trippy we need a conceptual framework to enable us to think better thoughts that make us able to search better are there universal rules that intelligent species follow currently our civilization sample size is only one mm, weird one of my lights is starting to blink let me just turn it off oh. <sighs> So we may make incorrect assumptions based solely on ourselves. Still, better than nothing. We know that humans started out with nothing but minds and hands that could build tools. We know that humans are curious, competitive, greedy for resources, and hella greedy. Expansionist. The more of these qu mm -hmm, trying to take over new and new territory more and more, it's never enough. Qualities our ancestors had, the more successful they were in the civilization building game. Mm. Being one with nature is nice, but it's not the path to it. Yeah, it's dominating nature is the path to total control. Irrigation systems or gunpowder or cities. Mm -hmm. So it's reasonable to assume that aliens able to take over their home planet also have these qualities. Which is scary, especially if they're far more advanced. And if aliens have to follow the same laws of physics, then there is a measurable metric for progress, energy use. 
Human progress can be measured very precisely by how much energy we extracted from our environment and how we made it usable to do things. We started with muscles until we learned to control fire. Then we made machines that used kinetic energy from water and wind. As a mm -hmm. that fire step was humongous. Our machines got better and our knowledge of materials expanded. We began to harness the concentrated energy from dead plants we dug up from the ground. As our energy consumption that's solar power in a form of chemical energy grew exponentially, so did the abilities of our civilization. Between 1800 and 2015, population size had increased sevenfold while humanity was consuming 25 times more energy. Ooh, that's crazy. It's likely that this process will continue into the far future. Based on these facts, scientist Nikolai Kardashev developed a method of categorizing civilizations from cave dwellers to gods ruling over galaxies. <laughs> gods ruling over galaxies. And they probably got the Dyson swarm type energy. The Kardashev scale, a method of. There, he pronounced it Kardashev scale. Let me hear it again. Cave dwellers to gods ruling over galaxies. The Kardashev scale. Kardashev. That's crazy. Kardashev. Karda, Karda, Kardashev, Kardashev scale, Kardashev scale. A method of ranking civilizations by their energy use. Kardashev. The scale has been refined and expanded on. Can you pronounce it? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> over the decades, but in general, it puts civilizations into four different categories. Mm -hmm. A type one civilization is able to use the available energy of their home planet. Mm. A type 2 civilization is able to use the available energy of their star and Are we in type 1 or 2? Planetary system A planetary system too Ooh. A type 3 civilization is able to use the available energy of their galaxy Whoa, whoa, what does that mean? <laughs> like you tap into all the energy in the galaxy, that is insane A type 4 civilization is able to use the available energy of multiple galaxies what? These levels differ by orders of magnitude. That's insane. Like, how would this even play out? I'm very interested in a type 3. It's like comparing an ant colony to a human metropolitan area. To ants, we are so complex and powerful, we might as well be gods. So to make the scale more useful, we need subcategories. On the lower mm. end of the spectrum, there are type 0 to type 1 civilizations. Anything from hunter-gatherers to something we could achieve in the next few hundred years. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we're stuck in type 1. We're not even at the, the borderline of type 2. <laughs> These might actually be abundant in the Milky Way. But a civilization that is not actively transmitting radio signals into space might be as close as our nearest stellar neighbor, the Alpha wow. Centauri system, and we would have no way of realizing they exist. But even if they transmitted radio signals like we do, it might not be very helpful. On an interstellar scale, humanity is practically invisible. Our signals may extend over an impressive 200 light years. Wow, so already our signals have traveled 200 light years. It has been 200 years since the first signals, I guess. But this is only a tiny fraction of the Milky Way. 100,000 light years across. Wow, we've got a long way to go. And even if someone were listening, after a few light years, our signals decay into noise. Impossible to identify it. <laughs> it's the troll emoji. Dollar signs. It's the source of an intelligent species. Today, humanity ranks at about level 0 0.75. We okay, that's very precise. 0 0.75, okay. So we are closer to crossing over into type two, which is exciting. We have altered our planet. We've created huge structures, mined and stripped mountains, removed mm -hmm. rainforests and drained swamps. Mm -hmm. We've created rivers and lakes and changed the- Reshaped our whole surroundings. We created our own environment. Composition and temperature of the atmosphere. If progress continues, and we don't make Earth uninhabitable, we will become a full Type 1 civilization in the next mm, cyborg human. next few hundred years. Any civilization that becomes a Type 1 is bound to look outside because it's likely that it's still curious, competitive, greedy, and expansionist. <laughs> greedy. The next reasonable step towards transitioning to Type 2 is trying to alter and mine other planets and bodies. 
asteroids, the moon, Mercury, maybe? This might start with outposts in space, transition to infrastructure and industries near the home planet, move on to colonies, and end with terraforming other planets by changing their atmosphere, their Mars rotation or position. As a civilization expands and uses more and more stuff and space, its energy consumption scales with them. So at some point, they may embark on the largest project a lower type 2 civilization can take on, harnessing the energy of their star by building a Dyson Swarm. Once Ooh. this megastruck... If uh, you want to learn more about that, we have a video on it. Go check it out in my channel. ...is finished, energy has become practically unlimited for molding the home system however they see fit. If they are still incredible, incredible, curious, competitive, greedy, and expansionist, and now have complete control over their home system, stellar infrastructure in place, and the energy output of a star, the next frontier moves to other stars light years away. For mm. a type two civilization, what's our closest star that has plenty of planets that are usable near to us? Let me know. The distance to other stars might feel like the distance between Earth and Pluto does to us today. Technically within reach, but only with immense investments in terms of time, ingenuity, and resources. <laughs> what? Are, are they pushing their own solar system? Forget taking a ship, they're taking the whole solar system to another solar system. <laughs> That's crazy. This begins their transition towards Type 3. This step is so far beyond us that it becomes hard to imagine what exactly these challenges will look like and how they'll be solved. Will they be able to find a solution to the vast distances and travel times of hundreds or thousands of years? Will they be able to communicate mm. and keep a shared culture and biology between colonies? Mm. This is a thing that I raised in one of my previous videos, that the shared biology as you adapt to new environments, the, the biology will change unless you consciously try to maintain it. Light years apart, or will they split into separate type two civilizations? Maybe even different species. Are there deadly challenges between the stars? Mm. So the closer a species gets to type three, the harder it becomes to fathom what it might actually look like. They might discover new physics, may understand and control dark matter and energy, or be able to travel faster than light. We might be... What would that mean? Being able to control dark matter and dark energy. What could that mean for humanity to do that also? Unable to grasp their motives, technology and actions. Humans are the ants trying to understand the galactic metropolitan area. A high type 2 civil... The irony would be if we're the most advanced in our galaxy and <laughs> we're imagining what we would end up being in the future instead of something that already does exist. Civilization might already consider humanity too primitive to even talk to. A type 3 civilization might feel about as like we feel about the bacteria living on the anthill. Maybe they... <laughs> the bacteria living on an anthill. You really don't give a... Uh, you might study it, though. And we have a lot of people that do study those type of things. So maybe the general population might not really care. But there's definitely going to be an inquisitive group that will focus on something like this. Wouldn't even consider us conscious or our survival relevant. Wow. We could only pray that they're nice guys. What is this? <laughs> come, come and suck up our son? That's not nice. Odds. But the scale doesn't necessarily end here. Some scientists suggest there might be type 4 and type 5 civilizations whose influence stretches over galaxy clusters or superclusters, structures what? comprising thousands of galaxies no and trillions of stars. No way. No way. <laughs> Ultimately, there might be a type Omega civilization. Come. Come on. If there was such a civilization out there, we would have seen the signs of it, I would think. But then again, goddamn, the universe is so vast. Oh. Able to manipulate the entire universe and possibly others. Type Omega civilizations might be the actual creators of our universe for reasons beyond our comprehension. <laughs> what? They simultaneously created the universe and... They exist within the universe. So are they able to travel in and out? Or how does that work? Maybe they were just bored. <laughs> as flawed as this classification. And you know, the thing is, within a computer, 
you might be able to create your own little universe. This supercomputing is getting to that level. Maybe this thought experiment is already telling us interesting things. If our ideas about the nature of species that form interstellar civilizations is sort of correct, then we can be pretty sure that there are no civilizations of Type 3 and beyond near the Milky Way. Their influence would in all likelihood be so all-encompassing and their technology so far above our own that we couldn't miss them. That's exactly what I was saying. No way. <laughs> no way. The galaxy should flash with their activity in thousands of star systems. We should be able to see or detect their artifacts or movements between different parts of their empire. Mm -hmm. Even if a Type 3 civilization did exist in the past and died a mysterious death, we should be able to detect some of the remnants of their empire. But when scientists looked, they didn't find remnants of harvested stars, decaying megastructures, or... Mm. How would a harvest star look like? How would scientists even, you know, decide this has been mined and harvested versus just a decayed star? Oh, I know how. Stars, no stars besides ones that go like supernova or whatever should be dead, right? There hasn't been enough time for that to happen yet. Or scars of great interstellar wars. So they're very likely not out there and never were. In a sense, this is very sad, but also very reassuring. It leaves the galaxy to us and others similar to us. So <laughs> unless, unless civilizations can't make it that far because they self-destruct or there's the great filter. That's another video in my channel. Go check it out. The most promising civilizations to look for may be somewhere in the spectrum from type 1.5 to type 2.5. They wouldn't be too advanced to understand them and their motives. They may have finished their first megastructures, and they might be in the process of moving stuff between stars and transmitting enormous amounts of information into space by accident mm. or on purpose. They mm. would probably also look to the stars. And that is another very interesting thing. Imagine, imagine an alien civilization that has something like the internet where it's just broadcasting data and information and we somehow tap into that <laughs> and gain all this new knowledge we might have never had for hundreds of thousands or even millions of years. Picture that. That'd be incredible. That'd be a groundbreaking, groundbreaking, universe shattering type of discovery, wouldn't it? And look for others. Then again, maybe we've got it all wrong. Maybe progress to type 2 does not mean expanding outwards and humanity is still too immature to imagine otherwise. Ooh. Corcus Arts gotta throw their shots. For now, all we really know is that we haven't seen anybody yet. Mm. But we've only just started looking. It's just a start. Until we finally game. find friendly super alien. Okay, so that was the end of the Kardashev scale. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more. Show your support. Help the channel grow. If you have any other videos you want to suggest, make sure you leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. See you in the next one. Dom Mecca out.